The train, for its type, is the most powerful vehicle on land. And the engines of Sodor are the power behind the docks, industries and branch lines that make up the world-renowned Northwestern Railway. These are the stories of Sodor. For the longest time I had always been skeptical of the phrase there's no such thing as bad publicity. Then disaster struck the Skarloey Railway and I saw firsthand how true this was. News of Andreas' death made the headlines and the SKR was swamped by visitors, many of whom offered their condolences to the engines. I'm pleased to say the immense outpouring of support helped them work through their grief. Moreover, the ongoing expansion throughout the Natwin Valley kept the chaps busy. On that note, they continued to make very good progress over the following months. Even the onset of winter did little to slow them down. That's not to say it was smooth sailing the entire time, or that mistakes weren't made. Fancy not securing your trucks on a hill. I'm appalled at you, Stuart. I never thought you of all engines could be so careless. I'm sorry, sir. I have no excuse. No, you do not. If I didn't need every single engine available, I'd have you shunt trucks in the yard until I could trust you again. Excuse me, sir, but I'm just as much to blame. I did bank Stuart up that hill, and if I'm not mistaken, you were late to your next job because of it. You are not a brake van, Rusty. For that matter, why didn't you have one? I did, sir, but the coupling broke. We didn't know how close a replacement was, so I decided to chance it. You should have gotten a replacement. I would have understood the delay. In Instead, you cost us an entire train and its cargo. I don't know what to say, sir. What can I do to make this right? <sighs> Just carry on with your regular duties, and please be more careful. Now, turn to your situation, Scarloey. It's all right, Sir Handel. I'm fine. You didn't sound fine as you limped into the station. We can't risk you breaking down, so I'm taking you out of rotation until you've had a full service. The trick is, how am I going to cover your duties? I can cover them, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. No problem. What's the first job? A passenger train to Sodden. Perfect. I'm taking a goods train there. I can couple the trucks up behind the coaches and take them in a single trip. Well, if you're absolutely certain, Duncan, go ahead. And thank you. My pleasure, sir. Happy to help. Something wrong, lads? Don't get me wrong, Duncan. I appreciate you covering my jobs, but please don't overdo it. You practically pushed me all the way from Krosny Kern. Pa, all I did was give you a nudge. You did plenty of the work. You always do. Anyway, I best get going. Don't want to keep the passengers waiting. Scar Lowy? Yes, sir? Have you ever known Duncan to be so... Agreeable? Polite? Considerate? Kind? No, sir. Never. It's almost frightening. So was my cock up. You made a mistake, Stuart, but at least nobody got hurt. Maybe not. What do you mean? Of course I chased after the trucks after they broke away. By the time I reached the bridge, they'd already gone over. As I was crossing, I heard what sounded like a roar. And when I looked down into the ravine, I could have sworn I saw something walk away from the crash site. What sort of something? I couldn't tell. Maybe a bear? Whatever it was, I'm terrified to think some poor animal got hurt. If it was able to walk away, it couldn't have been too badly injured, if at all. And besides, most animals will be hybrid this time of year. Then what did I see?
What happened to him? Let me put it this way. They found his head six feet away from his body. Good grief. What could have done that? There were clumps of fur around the site, so maybe a bear? A bear? Hold on, Rusty. I know what you're thinking. This can't be because of what happened with Stuart. Are you so short, Duke? I've never been a fan of coincidences. Because they don't exist. Oh, hello, Jack. What brings you here? Tis the season, Reneus. Fog's more common this time of year. Sir Handel's asked me to do some work around your line. Well, I can't think of a better man for the job. Oh, have you met Rusty by any chance? Can't say I have. Hello, Rusty. Hello, Mr. Bailey. Nice to finally meet you. I've heard a lot about you. Funny how relics are always so well known. And don't call me Mr. It's Jack. All right, so... Jack, you don't believe in coincidences? No, and I'll tell you why. You heard about the owl that hoots every time Mr. Fogg is about to roll in? Yes, it's never been wrong. That can't be coincidence. You have a point, but I find it hard to believe a wild animal would carry out such a precise attack. Regardless of what did it or why, it poses a serious threat. A group of hunters have already been organized to track it down. I heard, and I have very mixed feelings about that. Me too, but I'd rather do my job knowing I won't be mauled to death. I'll give you a mauling if you don't bug off. What was that? This area is for railway workers only. I'm a railway fogman, son. Well, you're in the way. Shove off, Grandad. Say that again. What? Say that again. Can you please just move? I'll do you one better. I've got some time to kill, so I'll give you a hand. Um, that'd be great. If you could start with those boxes. Sure thing. See you later, lads. Nice meeting you, Rusty. Yeah, you too. Bust my buffers. I thought for sure he was going to deck that prat. He would have if he called him Grandad again. You don't disrespect Old Bailey. Why do they call him Old Bailey anyway? Because he's been around forever. They were calling him Old Bailey back when I was an impertinent scallywag. You were built, Old Grandpa. You impertinent scallywag. Ugh, I don't like this. This what? Being out in the dead of night with a dangerous animal on the loose. Oh, come off it. We're not talking about a rampaging rhino here. I'm sure you can survive a bear. I'd also survive getting hit by a bullet. That doesn't mean I want to get shot. You've got to be kidding. That sounded close. Let's check it out. I thought the idea was to run away from gunfire. What happened? We've been following it all day, but each time we closed in, it gave us the slip. We thought we finally had it. Then, all of a sudden, it came out of nowhere. I think it led us into a trap. How can a bear? That was no bloody bear. It was three heads taller than me and just as wide. It walked on two legs and was covered in dark fur. It had a face like an ape, with fangs jutting from its lower jaw. Looked like something straight out of hell. And it got my mates. All right, all right. I've called the police and they're on their way. In the meantime, let's go wait in my office. Don't worry, we'll do all we can to help find your friends. If they're even alive. Tall, hairy, fangs, walks on two legs. Doesn't that sound like... Reneus, there has never once been a Nartwin-related attack. The poor lad is probably confused. So confused he conflated a bear with a creature out of folklore? It's possible, Reneus. I once had a soldier climb onto the roof of my cab because he thought he was being chased by a horde of screaming mice. Trauma can wreak havoc with the mind. Trauma or not, it sounds like his party ran afoul of something. <sighs> I have a sinking feeling this is going to get worse before it gets better. And unfortunately, he was right. The police, in conjunction with the SKR, set off the following morning with a search party. They found the missing hunters, or 
what was left of them. Of course, it was impossible to keep the details of such a slaughter under wraps, likewise of the survivors' testimony. This created a lot of fear. To keep the situation from getting out of control, the army was called in. All throughout the valley and surrounding communities, checkpoints and roaming patrols were established alongside a curfew. There were those who balked at this state of near martial law, which led to a few clashes and a few arrests. He didn't. He did. Clocked him right in the jaw. Took three troopers to hold him back, but he kept on fighting. I heard old Bailey was a hard man, but Fizzlin fuses. It's also absurd bringing in soldiers to catch a wild animal. This is a little more than a wild animal, Duncan. Sorry, I worded that wrong. It's just... Using force to break up protests always rubs me the wrong way. Why's that? I don't mean to be rude, Rusty, but I'd rather not get into it. What am I saying? It's a bit late for that. I'm sorry I was rude to you when you first arrived, and thank you for your help when I derailed back in the gorge. Don't mention it. It's what I'm here for. And I'm very glad of it. I might avail myself of your expertise right now. I'm heading into the valley soon to collect the little kipper. Have you got any words of caution or advice? No, except be careful. That'll do nicely. I'll see you later. Bye. Boss, my buffers, I am completely at a loss. It's like someone flipped a switch. Have you noticed he's been this way since Andreas died? How did Stanley put it? Trauma can wreak havoc with the mind? And what he said just now about protests being broken up? Has anything like that ever happened around here before? No, never. Maybe he was talking about his old railway. Where was that? I don't know. He never told us. We tried asking, but he always told us to bog off. And Mr. Sam was always cagey about where he got him from. Since he's so much more agreeable, maybe we can ask him now. Maybe we'll do it tonight. What do you mean missing? Exactly that. He never came back. They phoned Polwich and they said he left. Nobody's seen him since. That's impossible. An engine doesn't just disappear along with its train. Unless they've run afoul of something. You don't think, bust my buffers, we need to do something. I say we go look for him. Now wait a moment. What's there to wait for? One of us is out there. Right, out there with a killer monster on the loose. You really want to go searching for one and risk bumping into the other? If that happens and it's prepared to throw hands, I'll be happy to oblige. Reneus, I'm sorry, Scar Louis, but I'm tired of living in fear. Whatever's out there, it's time we showed it who's in charge. That would be Sir Handel, and he'd go balmy if we did this. Well, I haven't seen him for hours, and since he isn't here to stop us from going, I say we're in the clear. You can count me in, and I can't let you two have all the fun. Are you going to be all right? I'll manage. Are you coming, Ivo? <sighs> all right, all right. But what do we do about the army? They're bound to turn us away at the first checkpoint. What are they going to do? Arrest us? Come on! they? Maybe this thing got them too. I don't see any blood or bodies. Very strange soldiers would leave their posts. 
Who cares where they are as long as it's not here? At least we won't have to worry about them. Agreed. I suggest we split up. You two take the left line, Ivo and I will head right. Yes, splitting up. That always ends so well. Oh, shut up, Ivo. Come on, Rusty. Let's go. Ah! Skalui, what's wrong? I've got a cramp. Bollocks, this hurts. Are you all right? Can you move? Yes and no. Not on my own. Looks like I won't be much use here. Ivo, you'll have to tow me back to Crovens Gate. Gladly. We'll keep going. We've come this far, so we may as well. All right, but for the love of God, please be careful. Fizzling fireboxes, what is going on out there? The more immediate question is, what is going on here? What's all this about you four gallivanting about the valley in the middle of the night? Are you moonlighting as park rangers? No, sir. We went looking for Duncan. Duncan? He's missing, sir. He hasn't been seen since yesterday. Wait, you didn't get my message? Message, sir? Oh, I am so sorry. There must have been a breakdown in communication. Duncan's all right, relatively speaking. He had an accident in the valley. He collided with a lorry. His condition was too severe to risk bringing him back by rail, so they loaded him onto a flatbed. Are you saying he's been at the works the whole time, sir? Yes. I'm guessing nobody noticed him arriving by road? Very strange. And frustrating. Well... Where have you been, sir? You've been gone almost as long as Duncan. The lorry he collided with belonged to the army. I've been trying to wrangle details of the crash out of them ever since. What have they said? That their lorry broke down at a crossing, and Duncan, who was apparently speeding, ran into it. I call rubbish on that, sir. I would too. But... Duncan does have a history of recklessly riding the rails. He may have turned over a new leaf in recent times, but one is always defined by their past. What's going to happen, sir? Well, I'm not banking on receiving compensation from the army, which wouldn't be the end of the world. The influx of customers we had before this crisis has shored up our finances, so we can comfortably afford Duncan's repairs. But those will take a while. Is he in that bad of a state? Indeed. He's looking at a complete overhaul. Did you four really go looking for him? Yes, sir. And we found more than we bargained for. How so? The details of that night spread rapidly across the island. The area where it happened was searched the next day, and absolutely nothing was found. Nobody was able to ask Old Bailey about it as he disappeared for a good while. When he finally did resurface, he denied being there, citing the curfew as reason why he couldn't have been. Without corroboration, Rusty and Renace's recount was largely ignored, especially after the army announced they had eliminated the threat. Turns out, it had been a bear the entire time. A female bear. It seems Stuart's trucks had landed on her cubs, causing the enraged mother to go on a rampage. The hunter's testimony was also discredited after it came to light he had a drinking problem. There were skeptics to this explanation, but they too were ignored. Everyone just wanted life to get back to normal and were happy to accept what they had been told. As for Duncan, he had a long road to recovery. In a strange turn, neither he nor his crew could remember the accident. Since there were no witnesses save the soldiers allegedly involved, and coupled with his spotty record, the investigation ruled the SKR's number 6 must have been speeding. Therefore, the company received no compensation. But as Sir Handel said, this wasn't a severe hardship for the railway, which did recoup its losses in time. The expansion continued and all was well. For a time, 
Yes, I'm afraid the narrow gauge chaps still had one more trial ahead of them, but that is a story for another day. <laughs>